Drill is dangerous. Addicting! The mill is stimulating. <laughs> ESPN2 presents Lax Attack, the 1997 Major Indoor Lacrosse League preview show. This week's MILL Lax Attack is brought to you by Ruby Fresh Bud Light, who reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. Lax Attack will be right back after this. Welcome to the Mills Lax Attack. Every Saturday morning at 9.30, we'll be showing highlights of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. Never before have we shown each and every game. This year, you'll see all the action, the best of all the action. But first, you have to know the rosters. You have to know the changes in the offseason. And that's what our preview show is all about. So let's get right to it. The Mill for 1997. Team Preview. Hey, when you think Mill, go no further than defending champion Buffalo Bandits. They're a team on a roll and looking to repeat. Here's a look at the 97 Buffalo Bandits. Buffalo begins their defense of the North American Cup with a familiar group of stars on the offensive side of the field. Coach Les Bartley guides a team that has been in the league only five years, yet has played in four championship games. Last year, he rebuilt the team with a winning result. He believes in total team effort, and he is very demanding of his players. We want to beat ourselves, we're doing a damn good job. Let's go back up there, stay out of people's faces. The one thing that you do have as, as a, a championship team in defending it is, is that everybody's looking to get your butt. They know you're the team that needs to be knocked out. The Bandits are led by a true superstar, John Tavares, who last year set league records for assists and points showing true balance when you add that to his 41 goals hey just ask his teammates who's the best player around john tavares john tavares by far john tavares but this year he'll have to do more than just score goals to make up for the loss of line mate jim beltman this year i'll probably have to take on a little bit different role i'll probably have to get more loose balls I'm gonna have to take a different role and I'm gonna have to play it by game. A four-time off-pro is a devastating finisher scoring goals on 33% of his shots. Ted Dowling, he starts his second year with Buffalo as one of the league's best left-handed finishers. Always getting close to the goal and usually beating the defense off the bench to generate fast break pressure. He was the team's second leading scorer with 23 and his Dowling dash has become a focal point of the fans and defenses. The well, 97 team is pretty similar to the um, last year's team, 1996. Um, we're fast, we're in good shape, tough defensive team. We've got great scores, great leadership, and lots of experience. So um, it's very similar to the 1996 team. The 97 team will count on the Kilgore connection, starting with number 43, Darius Kilgore. Darius Kilgore's the man. He's the next coming superstar. Brother Rich is getting better every year. Last year, generating twice as many points as Brother Darius. When he gets the ball in front of the net, he can, you know, sort of make the goalie dance and, you know, make a nice move. And I, I really enjoy watching him, him shoot because he can sort of make a goalie look silly, come back smiling. Add Brother Travis, and you've got a family that contributed 60 points to the Bandits last year. When I joined the team, it was just an incredible feeling to walk out there as a family, you know, the three of us out there together, it was just a lot of fun. Other key players include Brian Hall, who plays tough all over the field. Our cohesion has been excellent the last few years, and I think that's one of the reasons for our success. 
We have to just, uh, you know, more or less walk before we run and, uh, and make sure everybody's comfortable in their position. How about second year player number four, Tom Fair, who despite his problem with penalties can get the face off when you need it, like right here in Rochester. And then he gets the ball to Jason Luke. Watch him get in position to finish off the play with a score. And how about number five, Steve Fennell, who can put the clamps on great players like Gary Gate with his smothering man-to-man -man defense. Our philosophy on defense would be to play strong, hard. Containment defense, come back, set up in the house, and don't let people penetrate our zone. And if they do, knock them over and make them hurt. But the biggest reason for last year's turnaround in Buffalo was the acquisition of goalie Pat O'Toole. From a platoon system in 95, the Bengals got a true number one talent and a crowd favorite. The toughest goal we have faced last year, I'd have to say, is Buffalo's paddle tool. And the chance of tool time after his big stops remind everybody that he has what it takes to keep his team in every game. Several rookies from the talent-rich box leagues of Canada will continue the youth movement, but there are two reasons why I think the Bandits will not repeat as champions. First, there are rule changes designed to stop the holding and mugging of players off the ball, and nobody does this better or for more advantage than Buffalo. But more importantly is the loss of five-time All-Pro Jim Feldman, number 32. He is the definition of a team player, constantly doing all the dirty work, anything it takes to win. His unusual height and long arms in this game made him the most feared ground ball player in the league's history. Jim Feldman was an excellent player, uh, but the, the way to deal with that, I think, is as a team. I think we all have to pick it up a little bit. He, he's an expensive, you know, he just can't be replaced. And, Although we can, uh, we can as a team make up for his uh, his loss. It'll be tough because when the Bandits needed a possession, it would be Beltman who would get the ball for them. He'd pick it up. Then two passes later, 125 ground balls on the year. You'd get a finishing shot right in the face of the goalie. Beltman was the ground ball king. He could do it all though. He could feed and he could shoot. Feltman's gone, but the remaining stars in the sellout crowds will continue to make the Bandits special. If you're a lacrosse player and you play in this area, you know who the Buffalo Bandits are, and most people give their right leg to be one of them, so I believe that's special also. Buffalo's not bad, but if you're looking for serious action, check out Gary Gate and the Philadelphia Wings. The Chicago Bulls walk with a swagger and style, much like the Philadelphia Wings. This is a franchise that has been there and done that. The ultimate team confidence because of a record as good as Buffalo's and twice the history. Third-year coach and former wing player Tony Resch will try to get championship back in Philly with the perfect combination of an explosive offense led by Gary Gate and the league's second-best defense anchored by first-team All-Pro Dallas Elliott. The 97 wings is going to be very exciting. I think we feel after last season that we came up a little short in the final game and we weren't quite prepared and we didn't quite have the speed that we really needed. So we've added some players and guys are really working their fitness to really increase the team's speed. The Wings have the league's best goals for versus goals against average of 5.1. That's better than defending champion Buffalo. Two goals better than Boston and four goals better than Rochester. Philly's system is really a two, you play both ends of the floor. Um, we, not every guy is a scorer on the offensive end, but there's guys that set picks, that cut, that feed the ball. Um, we do have guys, obviously, you get your shots, you want to score, um, but you are playing both ends in our system. The Wings are the only playoff team to return all key players. The top 15 are back. I think the uh, 97 team looks pretty good. We have a couple uh, guys this year. Um, we added Greg Trainer from Virginia. Um, good athlete, strong, lefty. A couple other new guys, like uh, Andy Oglesby, came from uh, Charlotte last year. And uh, I think he's going to do a good job also. And obviously, we have Chris Bates and John McAvoy back, who we missed uh, uh, last year. And how about veteran Adam Mueller from Baltimore? He's a complete player that can help on both ends of the field. But it's the old faces that will give the Wings a great shot at the championship. Only two players in the league have more goals and points than all-pro Tom Marichek. His 27 goals and 28 assists make him a star. And along with Gate, the most lethal lefty-righty combination in the mill. But no player in the league has improved more steadily than number 11 All-Pro Kevin Finneran. He is balanced, becoming a very difficult player to cover. 
but it's five-time All-Pro Dallas Elliott, who has been the backbone of the defense for six years. Until Dallas Elliott gets knocked off his perch, uh, he's still the man. He's the guy that I look to. He's the, the barrier that eventually I want to get to. The guy's done everything. He's won mill titles. He's four-time or five-time uh, All-Pro. So he's the guy that I strive to be. Watch number nine, Chris Glenn, and number eight, Scott Gabrielson, because they're the role models for Philly's team hustle. They're eight- and nine-year veterans, but nobody plays harder than these two. Both players are successful in the face-off circle and give you a goal a game. Canadian Steve Govett, number 44, is Radford University's all-time league scorer. He's a support player here, but he can be dangerous as a shooter. Brian Booker has always focused on defense, and he's one of the best. I think in this league, if you really try and you're a good athlete um, and really concentrate on defense, that anybody can be a good defenseman in this league. Billy Miller, number 99, was a two-time player of the year at Hobart College. Only 160 pounds, but he takes more hits than anybody on his team. At six foot five, second-year player Peter Jacobs brings unusual size to the game of indoor lacrosse, but he has been successful. Peter Jacobs is going to be a great asset to the team this year. I thought he had a great rookie year last year. He's big, he's strong, and he's got decent speed, and he's really adapted to shooting the ball and putting it in the back of the net. The Wings have five mill all pros on their roster, more than any other team in the league. But Chopper and the crazed Philly fans will hope for a no-injury season for a fierce challenge to get the cup back. The Rochester Nighthawks are all that and more. They're a young team hungry to win and have the talent to take it all. Here's a preview of the 97 Rochester Nighthawks. The Rochester Nighthawks are the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde team of the league. Good look at the Rochester bench. They're a little bit stunned right now. They are not in a groove at all. Stunned the crowd. Time is out. The three-goal win for them. Last year's team was two and four after six games and had to win the last four games, including a win in Buffalo to make the playoffs. They can beat the best in Buffalo and Philly and lose to the worst in New York or Baltimore. Rochester Nighthawks. Never know what you're going to get. Sometimes uh, they'll play well and and beat you the next time it's a totally different team that shows up. Coach Barry Palace begins his third year as coach with a team that will miss a few familiar faces. Off to retirement are veterans Rex Lyons, number 14. How about big score Pete Park, he's six foot five. And Brian Lemon, number seven. That's 20 years of experience, 47 points on offense he can't count on. Well, in losing uh, Lions and Park, you know, they definitely uh, gave us a lot of goals over the last two years. It's just a matter of um, execution over the course of the year, you know, to find out if those uh, holes will be filled, and I believe they will be. What Palace can count on is four all-pro players, three more than Buffalo, led by number 19, Paul Gate. The league's most prolific scorer ever. He holds the all-time record for most goals in a game, most hat-tricks, most goals in a season, most shots on a goal in a game, most goals in a career. He's unstoppable. The best natural shooter's got to be Paul Gate. <laughs> The guy, he can score at will, you know, he'll score from anywhere and, and everywhere. <laughs> and he's been playing with a back problem that has slowed him over the last two years. When he's healthy and in shape, nobody stops Paul Gates. And there's a whistling shot by the Gator, the great Paul Gates. In fact, no two players can stop Paul Gates as evidence in the first game against New York last year. Just before the half, though, after running over people in the first quarter, he re-injured his back and wasn't the same after. I just want to go out there and try and win and try and prove to myself that, you know, I can play a season injury-free. And... The All-Pro support continues with Dewey Jacobs, number 34, off his best year ever with 25 goals and 27 assists. Dewey's become a top finisher in the mill. I think it'll definitely, I'll have more attention paid to me this year, but uh, I look at, at that as a challenge, and uh, I feel I'm ready for it. Chris Driscoll, number 93, punched in with 18 goals, added 24 assists, but he needs to play tougher to be a consistent impact player. 
Powell's going to get an immediate lift if Timmy Sudan, number 33, plays up to his 1994 All-Pro level. This is a guy who can give you a hat trick a game. He could help the Rochester Nighthawks this year. The defense counts on goalie Steve Dietrich, who has developed an appetite for making big saves. There's pressure on myself, but I like I like pressure. You know, I like knowing that I have to play well for the team to, to do well. And it, you know, like it, it's great pressure to have, and I'm looking forward to it. Jeremy Hollenbeck, number 16, is getting a better sense of the game and could put up big numbers this year. Matt Ryder from Syracuse, number five, hard-nosed athlete who generated a goal per game. This quiet leader is used to scoring big goals. He should step up this year. Two more losses to this team are backup goalie Derek Collins to Baltimore and this guy, Brian Silcott to New York. He's a face-off man, but those losses should be offset by these rookies. Palace, Teat, Baker, and Bomberry, all raw but talented. Another positive move for Coach Palace is the acquisition of Charlie Lockwood from New York. A world team player, All-American, NCAA champion in field lacrosse, Laser Lockwood will grow into an impact player if given time. He joins ex-Syracuse teammates, Mark Vieta, number nine. Defensive specialist Reggie Thorpe, Matt Ryder, number five, and the legend Paul Gate. This gives his team a real orange flavor. Last year, there was a stressful relationship between Coach Palace and his franchise player, Paul Gate. This year, Gate's status as captain has been taken away. Not a great start for an improved marriage. I still go out there and do the same job, whether, you know, I've got a seat on my shirt or not. You know, my job is to, to try and be a leader out there. Another small problem is that the number one and three scores on the team forgot to show up for the playoffs. No goals for Jacobs and Driscoll in the postseason. The rumor is that Paul Gate has been using a personal trainer to overcome his injury and conditioning problems. If that's true, this team could go all the way. Don't go away. When we return, we'll take a look at a man who's got a lot going on. A father, a teacher, a high school coach, and uh, oh yeah, he's also expected to resurrect the Baltimore Thunder. Can your radio do this? Only one radio can give you stereo sound this big, yet is small enough to fit almost anywhere. The extraordinary new Wave Radio from Bose. Press the remote control and hear sound from a radio like you've never heard before. Big, rich sound that fills the room. You hear music the way it was meant to be heard. Clear, full, incredibly lifelike. You've got to hear the Wave Radio to believe it. And now you can, in your own home. Satisfaction guaranteed. Call us toll free to learn how, and we'll deliver the Wave Radio to your door. Experience big stereo sound from a radio. Call today for more information. It will make a difference in the way you listen to music. A big difference. George, check this out. What is this? This is our new theme music. All right. Hey, George. Hey, Carl. Hey, Carl. What are you guys doing? We just did. Mind if I join you? is pretty simple. Five guys going in each direction, throwing the ball in the net for one goal. 30-second shot clock keeps the offense going. But there are a lot of rules you have to adhere to, and there are some changes for 1997. Rules and Tools, brought to you by Old Spice. The goal in the indoor league is four feet high by four and a half feet wide. Now contrast that to the NHL goal that's also four feet high, but it's six feet wide. It's a smaller target for lacrosse is because of the great accuracy of shots and the fact that they come from right, left, high, and low. Hockey, of course, the puck always starts from on the ice. Now, even with the great accuracy of the shooters in the middle, when you put a goalie into the 16 square feet, they're in much to shoot at. The three officials in the middle have a rotation system. They don't always stay in the same place at the same time. There are two officials on the bench side. The offensive end, that's the lead official. On the defensive end of the play, that's the trailing official. And there's always a single official on the far side from the benches. The rotation is simple. After a goal, the lead official and the single official swap places. 
If your team was short a man, you'd be tempted to stall the ball. Well, the mill took care of that with the 10 second rule. In any uneven situation, both teams are required to get the ball past the midfield line in 10 seconds, or they'll be penalized. Now, you can call a timeout and then come back and reset that 10 seconds, but then you've got to push the offense. The crease rules are primarily for the protection of the goalie. The crease is this white line that's a nine foot radius from the midpoint of the goal. And no offensive player can step in here. Defensive players can run through. But once either offense or defense gets possession of the ball, this is no man's land. The goalie can make a save. Now he has possession. He gets four seconds to either get rid of the ball or get out of the crease. The biggest new rule is really an interpretation. Refs won't allow players to be hacked on relentlessly without the ball anymore. And pushing from the rear will be called a lot more this year. What it all shakes down to is keep the game moving with as many shots and as few injuries as possible. The big coaching change this year is in Baltimore. Skip Lickvis is out and John Tucker is in. Now, John Tucker is quite a story in the world of lacrosse, a story that we thought you would like to know. Hi everybody, Quint Kesnick here at the Gilman School in Baltimore, Maryland. This is the home of John Tucker, history teacher and head lacrosse coach. But recently, John's been named as the head coach of the Baltimore Thunder. Let's meet John Tucker, Renaissance lacrosse man. I'd like to be you know, a husband first, a father second, a teacher third. So is it true here that most your descendants of Europeans hold the wealth in this country. And a coach fourth. I mean, if I had to rank those things, I'd like being a good teacher. You can be a coach anywhere, I think, but uh, being a, big, a good teacher is, is really tough to get. My kids, I mean, they mean everything to me. I mean, it's just a, um, I'm in a wonderful spot right now. <laughs> John's primary profession is teaching history at the Gilman School. Well, I enjoy just working with kids in general. I mean, teaching, coaching, I, I really think that they're one and the same. Um, I'd like to see kid, kids get better, you know, throughout the year, or throughout a week, or whatever the uh, time span is. I just enjoy seeing a kid improve and it's something that they're doing. My strength probably lies in my caring of the, of the kids and, and my ability to maybe get down to their level and think like they do and talk with them about their personal life. And, and I, I really feel like I can get to know them a little better than a lot of people can. John, what's the difference between teaching in the classroom and coaching out on the athletic field? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that there's a lot of difference there at all. I mean, I think that you need to go into the classroom and the field, on the field exactly the same way. You need to be organized. You need to have a practice plan or a lesson plan structured in the same fashion. John applies the same level of professionalism on the lacrosse field and is regarded as the finest young high school lacrosse coach in the nation. At the high school level, I think that, you know, people tend to look at wins and losses and championships and think that you're successful. I, I don't necessarily think that that's true. I think that, you know, what you can do with what you have, whether your record's 500 or 10 and 1 or 1 and 10, um, really um, can, can be the measuring stick for a successful season. Although new to the mill as a head coach, John played eight seasons for the Philadelphia Wings and when he retired was the leading goal scorer and assist man in league history. He's one of the all-time greats. Pass back to Tucker, waits and scores. Beautiful two-on-one and he gotta love the crisscross in midfield to set the play up. If I had to describe myself that I would, was probably a, um, a decent all-around player. I'd like to play both ends of the field, not just a good offensive player not just a good defensive player. I, I like to be a, a pretty good at both ends. John takes over a Baltimore Thunder team that has won less than a third of their games during the past five years. This, without question, is a, a tremendous challenge for, for me. It gets my blood flowing and makes you become very innovative, very creative, and that, that's something that appeals to me, the challenge to, to overcome something that other people haven't been able to do. Well, thus far, John Tucker has met every challenge he's faced, but it's going to take a special effort from a special person to turn around the Baltimore Thunder. I have great assistant coaches, great support people, and I think that um, we, we've taken this on this responsibility, and, and I promise you, you know, by the time I get out of here, we'll get it done. I can guarantee that. For Lax Attack, this is Quint Kessler. When Lax Attack returns, we'll take a look at the Baltimore Thunder and the remaining teams in the Wild and Woolly Mill. A friend of mine told me, try America Online. I said, why? I've got a computer. He said, try it. You'll see. It's simple. Every time you sign on, welcome. It tells you if you've got mail. You've got mail. Want to send some email? 
type the message, click here, and it's done. I like this. With one click, I can browse all kinds of great features on America Online. I've gotten help with my golf swing, planned my next vacation. I even get stock price updates every 15 minutes. America Online has over 100 newspapers and magazines, everything from Business Week Online to Cycle World, and I can browse them all. With America Online, you can point and click your way across the Internet. And their web browser makes it easy to explore the World Wide Web. Call the toll-free number and you'll receive your free startup kit in 53 hours to look around. It's worth a try. You'll see. New Unlimited Internet and AOL for one low price. Call 1-800-817-1600 for your free 50-hour trial. Call now. How can you tell who's on the move in the NHL? You check with us. NHL Tonight, the most comprehensive nightly recap of the day's action, highlights, and stories in the NHL. Tonight at 11.30, only on ESPN2. Every year, the teams come in with a lot of enthusiasm. Everybody thinks they have what it takes to win the North American Cup. Let's take a preview look at this year's teams. Team Preview, remaining teams. Up in Beantown, they don't mess around. Tom Carmine and goalie Marty O'Neill are two tough customers. Let's take a look at the 97 Boston Blazers. No coach gets more out of his talent than Ron Frazier of Boston. Number 45, Tom Carmine is Boston's only All-Pro. He is unquestionably their leader. Tom Carmine to Boston has done a lot of damage to, to Buffalo over the past, uh, last few years. He, uh, he's got excellent feet. He's very strong with both hands. We have to be aware of uh, Carmine when he's on the floor. He's a great athlete, great speed, you know, tremendous ability, and, and he, he's a catalyst on the team. He's the, he's the person that makes that team go. And he gets help from Ryan D. Frazier, number 18. He plays with the heart and fire that has made the Blazers the most successful of the American player-dominated team. He plays hard for four quarters and can take ferocious hits. How about number 46, Charlie Blanchard, dangerous shooter from the left hand. And he is tough, too. Blanchard's a shooter. He's a marked man by the defenses, and he pays for it. Tom Ryan. Number 17, he's developed into a finisher by working hard in the upstate New York Summer League. His best numbers were last year, 17 goals. And number 16, Dave Donovan, another no-name player. Tremendous ability, getting better every year. He's trying to pick up from the offense left by Darren Fridge, number 32. Rookie of the year last year, but not on the team this year. Fridge scored 22 goals. It'll be missed by this team, the backbone of the defense, Marty O'Neill. The star is definitely Marty O'Neill. He's the goaltender, he's the emotional leader. He's very emotional. He's irrational sometimes. But he is the, the leader on that team. The field play between the below average offense and the above average defense is what separates Boston from the other non-playoff teams. Face-off man, Rodney Tapp, number 38. An Iron Man at 5'8", 200 pounds. He's one of the top man-on-man -man defensive players on the team. Glenn Stevens, number 15. Ninth year in defensive excellence for this team, along with teammates number six, Paul Talmo. Tough. Number 37, Todd Francis. He's tough. And all of these three are 6'2", 200 pounds each. Boston's always tough. Uh, we, they've given us our fits uh, forever when we play Boston. Um, they're a big, strong, hard-hitting team. They're fast, and uh, they play a defensive game probably better than any team in this league. Number four, Jed Cronin gives a steady performance with a one goal per game average along with number 12, Bill Edel, both capable of moving up the offensive ladder. Two big losses for Boston, number 99, Peter Schmitz, and number 13, Bruce Chen and Chuck, who have provided quiet leadership for many years. New experienced help comes from Tony Millen. He comes in from New York. He fits the Blazer mold of conditioned, tough players. But the Blazers haven't improved offensively and need career years offensively from several players, or they may be watching New York in the playoffs. In the Big Apple, the Saints are marching on. New York is looking to continue their turnaround from last year, and with young gun Darren Lowe, the future looks bright. Here's the 97 New York Saints. 
Coach Vinny Pfeiffer goes into his second year in New York with possibly the most improved roster in the mill. Last year, he got to know his players, they got to know him, his system, his demands, and his formula for success. I inherited an organization uh, last year, and I needed to make some changes. Uh, very rarely will you be able to turn an organization around in one year. Uh, but I put myself under the same scrutiny that I do my players. Uh, I mandatorily must produce uh, a winning organization. Otherwise, I wouldn't be satisfied. Neither would my players. If it is accurate that this is, in fact, a one-goal league, the difference from 96 to 97 should be the reduction of goals against by potentially one or two and the increase of goals for by potentially one or two and then you've completely changed the face of the organization. With only three wins, he had the league's worst offense with no player who could score 20 goals. He needed a score and got one in Baltimore's Millen. New York Saints, 97. We got some new faces. I'm actually a new face there this year. We got a lot of veterans back as well. Um, we've been practicing real hard. We play Philadelphia in our opening game. We're really looking forward to that. Pfeiffer next went to the west coast of Canada for Tyson Elias, number 49 here, playing for Buffalo several years ago. This is a young force in the Canadian Summer League. He could be the next 20 goal scorer and make New York an instant playoff contender. More good news for the Saints as the core group of talent from last year returns offensively. Led by number seven, Brian O'Keefe. He got 17 goals last year, as did number 21, Eric Saramat. There's 34 goals returning, and they should get more. Also, along with Saramat, Steve Sobrato, he can score, but the bigger story is his brother, Vinny. Vinny's critical to the team in a lot of intangible ways. Go more. He's a field general four-star. There's no question about it. I think that his dedication to staying in shape is usually one of the first guys to come and last guys to go. So there's tremendous stories within sports in general, and Vinny Sombrato is one of them. Tim McAtee also is a scorer. He had a great year. Ten goals in only eight games last year. Watch out for McAtee. Also, Jason Walter, number 27, the Canadian Cannon, put up big numbers last year. Should get better. This is Brian Silcott. He'll help in the face-off department acquired from Rochester. And then, number 11, Darren Lowe. Should add a lot of offensive power. But the big story is this man. Goalie Sal Acasio, the greatest American goalie to play in the mill. Now in his ninth year, he's seen it all, stopped it all. Pfeiffer is an ex-goalie, knows the minutes can wear you out, so he arranged for Dwight Metke to be the backup. This gives New York an option in the goal they never really had and a shot at the playoffs. We win the world championship. You know, you can dip me in a bucket of water and roll me around in oatmeal if you want. I don't mind. It's been stormy down in Baltimore the last couple of years, but the Thunder are hoping to turn things around with a new coach and a fresh attitude. Here's the 97 Baltimore Thunder. The Baltimore Blues start with having the league's worst defense, two goals worse than the offense every game. John Tucker, a former Mill All-Pro and world champion of Philadelphia, still the league's fourth all-time scorer, takes over as coach of Baltimore. He knows how to win in this league and knows he was an underdog to do it with the team he inherited. We think that we're capable of beating anyone. We're not really looking at, we're not going to try to just make the playoffs. I mean, our objective is to win the whole thing. He decided that he needed more role players who would run through a wall for his team. Gone on the new roster are former stars like Butch Marino. Tim Welsh. Lindsey Dixon. And last year's leading scorer, Mark Mellon. All players he played for with the United States team that won the World Cup in Manchester. That's 42 goals for 30% of the offense. Gone, bye-bye, see you later. There are a lot of guys and people that we had to let go that were friends of mine. and um, But we felt in the best interest of the team, we, we kept the 23 guys that, um, 
best represent what we're looking to do. I think John gets a tremendous amount of respect. He's a uh, kind of coach who's won everything. He's won in the box. He's won at the club championship level. He won in college. He won, you know, he's won everything. And uh, I think he's a great choice for us. He wanted conditioned, fast, coachable, talented, if unproven lacrosse players, and he acquired them any way he could. He coached Ryan Wade from Charlotte, John Conley out of retirement, and drafted Dave Evans from Brown. These are young talent that might help him do it. And he successfully wooed Derek Collins from Rochester, where he wasn't getting much playing time behind Dietrich. He'll share time with veteran J.J. Pearl, who, though a little inconsistent, has won some big games in Baltimore. Well, our goalie situation is, is pretty solid right now. We, we acquired uh, Derek Collins from Rochester, and we feel like he, as if he's one of the best goalies in the league right now. Tucker kept a core of talented, tough guys on defense, led by world team player Todd Curry. He added youth and speed. Folks has the speed of an All-American from the University of Maryland, and number seven, Jeff Gladson could be the best athlete on the Baltimore Thunder team. Defense isn't going to be a problem this year. There's no question. We're, we got to get all over that ball, and we got to start playing some good defense. He also kept the most productive line on last year's team intact. Fast breaking Timmy Harms. Diving Bobby Martino. The balanced Paul Cantabene. The Master Blasters, Brian Kronberger and Jeff Klatson. That's, without question, our go-to line. It's really been our go-to line in the last three years. This is a group that has played together for four years, scoring 65 goals last year for 45% of the Thunder in the Thunder. They go out there, they run for the ground balls, they get beat up. They get hit from behind. I love running with these guys, and you know, we've been running together for almost four years now. And, uh, they're a great bunch of guys, and I respect the hell out of them. After all this, Tucker looks to have bettered his opponent's worst defense by as much as three goals per game. But unless he finds more offense, it'll be impossible to win more than two games this year. So his dreams of success fall on the hands of two veterans, Rob Sheck, number 19, and natural lefty Jeff Wills, number 16. These players have the potential to more than double their one goal per game average last year and have to if Baltimore's going to win. We're really looking forward to beating all the teams. I mean, our steps are not just to look at New York and Boston, but we're really, we're going after Philadelphia and Buffalo. You think you know the mill? When we get back, we'll show you some sounds of the game that only the players are privy to. Next on the 1997 Mill Lax Attack Show. of a challenge. So when I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice, that's what I thought I was getting into. What I got was a sure thing. High endurance deodorant. It evaporates less quickly than the leading stick. It also lasts longer and protects better. Old Spice even guarantees it. Or call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. So if you're looking for a real challenge, the sky's the limit. If you're looking for the best deodorant, try high endurance from Old Spice. Because now you've got proof and a guarantee. <laughs> Dana Rosenblatt takes on Glenwood Brown tomorrow at 10, only on ESPN2. You know, I have the highest respect for the players in this league. They have to not only be tough, but they have to be very skilled. And throughout the season, we'll bring you very close and inside the tough game of indoor lacrosse. But don't take my word for it. Take a listen now to the Bud Light Sounds of the Game. Bud Light Sounds of the Game. It's time to dance! Let's dance! Down in 
the corner to sprung the shooter. No, 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 no. It's called an illegal kick or a moving kick down there in the far corner. Back of the head. He missed the head. Hey, don't, don't, don't touch him. Don't touch him. Hit me. Give me a number. 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 Let's get every loose ball. After a man moves, he gets hit. I got it. Let him go. No peacemakers. Ball? I got it. Just hold tight. He's up. Nothing stupid. Reset. Our top. If you stay disciplined, we'll be fine. Triple and 22 from Baltimore. If you're surfing the web and you want to get in touch with a major indoor lacrosse league, check out our website. You can get the latest lax attack numbers and league stats, including action photos, at the league's official homepage, www.millhome.com. Or if you want to ask me some tough questions, well, let's do it. Here's my email address. It's for leaf at ix.netcom.com. Or maybe you want to know if a single lacrosse announcer, a new guy like Quinn Kesnick, is doing this weekend. What's he doing? Well, write him. Quint at MediaDimensions.com. The uh, suspect seems there. You see the weapon. Suspect. A dangerous suspect tries to escape. Good pursuit. Good pursuit. And a suspect deadly is. game of cat and mouse begins. Suspect running west. We're suspect now running north. Down city streets. At breathtaking speeds. All seen through the eye in the sky. The These up. are hot pursuits. Now, for the first time, Keen World Direct and Sky Action Video bring you this dramatic footage of real-life high-speed chases as they're seen from the sky above. Must be stopped. Smashing the vehicle, smashing another vehicle. Hot Pursuits is available only through this special television offer. Witness every thrilling moment as chopper pilots track out-of-control crooks in desperate acts. The garage portion of the home. Driving through oncoming traffic. Dodging innocent bystanders. Lost control. He's spinning. He's spinning. Smoke coming from the tire. Where is this guy going? And crashing into everything. Collision. In their way. Hot pursuits will keep you on the edge of your seat. Satisfaction guaranteed. Call this toll-free number now to get hot pursuits for just $19.95. Order now with your credit card, and you'll also receive Dangerous Rescues absolutely free. Watch helicopters play a vital role in incredible rescues that were once impossible. He's got him! Now you can experience how chopper pilots cheat death with nerves of steel to save lives. That's right. Both adrenaline-pumping programs are yours for only $19.95. This incredible television offer is not available in stores, so call now. For rush delivery of Hot Pursuits and your free bonus video, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-452-0909. That's 1-800-452-0909. Or send your check or money order for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling to Hot Pursuits, P.O. Box 10254, Des Moines, Iowa, 50336. Call 1-800-452-0909 right now. We all know about the All-Pro teams, but did you know that each team picks a team MVP? Well, they certainly deserve recognition. We're going to show you those guys now because they are certainly players to watch. Bud Light players to watch. Well, in addition to voting on an MVP, each team votes on an unsung hero, a seventh man as well. Nobody knows better than your teammates, so these are definitely players to keep an eye on. In Baltimore, Brian Kronberger finally made MVP status after being unsung hero in 94 and the seventh man in 95. He returns as the team's top goal scorer with 19 from last year. He can face off, and he is tough.
Nobody works harder in Baltimore than unsung hero Bobby Martino, number three. Watch him this year. He commonly launches his 155 pounds into better shooting angles. In New York, Eric Saramat, number 21, finally unseated five-time winner Sal Lacasio as the team MVP. He's becoming a very consistent scoring threat for the Saints. Watch him this year. Pat McCabe, number 29, a defensive specialist. Watch him for the Saints. His offense is coming on. And number nine, Gordon Purdy from Australia. He's got the flash and speed of a great offensive star. He is the seventh man. Boston's Tom Carmine, you've heard about him. He is great. Number 45 leads his team in points and intensity, taking the MVP award for a fourth time in six years. Donovan, number 16. Dave Donovan has stepped up his game. His teammates noticed naming him unsung hero for 96. And Rodney Tapp, 38, finishing off this play. He has been consistent. He gets recognition as the seventh man in Boston. Rochester has begun to rely on MVP Dwayne Jacobs. Dewey, number 34, posting his best numbers in his career last year. Reggie Thorpe from Syracuse, a defensive specialist, is the unsung hero. He's a tough player. And Timmy Sudan, number 33, earns the seventh man award. Big goals and big games. The MVP pick in Philly was easy. Gary Gate leading the league in goals. He is unstoppable on a fast break. But he gets help every game on the defensive end. It's Brian Volker, number six, who helps out a great shooter like Gary Gate and gives him these opportunities. We'll take a look at Unsung Hero right now. Brian Volker pummeling a Buffalo player. He is a defensive specialist. Plus, Scott Gabrielson, number eight, gets the award for the second time in three years of seventh man with his unselfish play. Buffalo selects superstar John Tavares. No surprise here as their MVP for the fourth straight year. For their unsung hero, they go to a defensive specialist, though. Again, it's Tavares on the fast break. How does he get the great opportunities? Well, defense by guys like this man, Brian Hall, and unsung hero, Mike Hazen. He is a tremendous player, and he can make it happen on both ends of the field. Seventh man, Brian Hall, continues to lead the team by excelling with unselfish play. And as we go to break, let's take a look at the 1996 Brian League leaders. Brian, the official equipment supplier to the mill. The hum of the saw, the wail of the drill. Each year, every team tries to find the next superstar to add to their roster. Let's take a look at what we call our Young Guns, players you want to watch this season. Young Guns.
When we return, we'll take a look at the MILL's first weekend of action. The quest for the 97 North American Cup begins in Buffalo, where the defending champion bandits take on the title-hungry Rochester Nighthawks. They're the team we have to beat to get the ring, and, and uh, whether it be January 4th or sometime in February, or hopefully sometime in April, uh, you're always excited for Buffalo. Rochester always comes out and plays a strong. They did last year. And since it is the first game of the year, we have to go out and prove that we are the world champions and that we're going to repeat this year. As in years past, the Bandits will focus their attention on Rochester offensive leader Paul Gate, who is looking to forget an injury plague 96 season. You know, I think we can all agree that last year was my worst season ever offensively and stats wise, but uh, we're looking to improve on that by staying healthy and, uh, you know, going out and doing my job. The 95 champion Wings attempt to take Manhattan and the Saints on their quest to regain the title. And it's a winning tradition. The Wings are about winning. What comes to mind when playing the Philadelphia Wings is, uh, is usually losing. New York is hoping that new faces and returning star Eric Saramat will add to a victory. But the mother of all grudge matches is in Baltimore this weekend. The new look Thunder hopes lightning doesn't strike twice against Boston because last year the Blazers trounced them by 15 goals. They annihilated us. They humiliated us up in Boston. Uh, I still got scars from that game. We had some guys scoring seven goals on us, saying it's too easy and running around, and them scoring 26 goals against us is an embarrassment, and I'm very sad to be a part of that. We were really unsuccessful. They embarrassed us out of their stadium, and it's going to be a good chance for us to get some revenge on what they did to us last year up there. And I can guarantee you when they come here, it's going to be a different story. And the story is major indoor lacrosse league action. Off and running for 1997. Nothing but broke. And you can be a part of the action. All six teams playing this Saturday. Let's take a look at the schedule. The marquee matchup, the Rochester Nighthawks at the Buffalo Bandits, the defending champions. Would you believe that Buffalo has never beaten Rochester at Buffalo? That's true in the regular season. A great matchup at the Marine Midland Arena. Then Boston travels to Baltimore, a must win if they want to be in the playoffs this year. And Philadelphia goes to New York to start their quest to regain the cup. A full slate of major indoor lacrosse league action. Put your hand... This week's MILL Lax Attack Show has been brought to you by Bud Light. With Brewery Fresh Taste, the official beer of the major indoor lacrosse league. Well, that's our preview show, folks. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lee Felsmo, and I'll see you again next Saturday morning at 9.30 for our coverage of major indoor lacrosse.